Is conflict online holding you back from growing your business as a dietitian? If you feel like conflict is scary and it might be holding you back from growing your brand, I want you to know that you're not alone. In today's video, I'm going to give some tactical examples to help you overcome your fears so that you can rise above the ordinary expectation for dietitians to like not face conflict and you can learn how to develop effective communication skills and show up for yourself and for your clients. Because ultimately as registered dietitians, we're here to add value and learning how to manage conflict will help you get one step closer to doing that effectively. You might be wondering what is a difficult conversation? So first let's identify this before we talk about solving it. Now a difficult conversation can be any conversation that involves a sensitive subject matter. It could be an emotionally charged topic for another person or group of people. And it's probably going to involve something similar to, let's say, politics or any kind of strong opinions. In the field of dietetics, there are a lot of strong opinions. Most notably, health at every size, weight neutrality, weight loss, diversity and inclusion, and anything politics related. Even agriculture and food and food policy can be very controversial topics. And keep in mind that what's difficult for you might not be triggering for the next person which is why thinking about sensitivity is really important. Examples of what this might look like could be bullying on a post on social media, maybe comments that are passive aggressive or rude, disagreement that doesn't result in anything positive or clear anger. Now this can be upsetting because it impacts productivity, causes misunderstanding, and disagreements can negatively impact our mindset as dietitians, especially if we're new at navigating these awkward and difficult conversations, which by the way, happen all the time in dietetics. So this is an important topic because if you're a registered dietitian, then you will know that dealing with difficult conversations is just part of being a registered dietitian. Well, there are some practical ideas to approach conflict that you might be aware of. Uh, the most obvious one might be slowing down a moment and just taking a breath to reassess the situation. You have two distinct options to engage or to not engage. If you are going to engage, you want to respectfully listen and take some breaths and make sure that you're giving space to the other person to also give some interactions and feedback to the conversation. If you're not engaging with a particular conversation, that can look like ignoring, or you might decide to delete a comment if it was bullying or rude, or you can even block that person if you choose to do so. Further, you can either mute people that you know you don't like or that trigger your mindset, or you can unfollow them. You have the choice and the power to protect your time and energy. I do suggest that you approach these conversations with compassion. Here's an example of what it looks like to approach a conversation with compassion. For those of you that are aware of the food industry article from Washington Post, I spoke about it on LinkedIn and Facebook, and here was what I had said briefly. I won't read you the full article. What I talked about is building trust in our communities. I referred to the article, I linked it, and then I had mentioned the code of ethics. And I said that it means that we, you know, we're not bashing people, our own peers, even if we don't disagree with them. And then we want to protect our profession. So that means that we're not gossiping about our peers publicly and that social media has changed how we're seen and heard. So now's the time to build trust. That was my way of approaching a very sensitive charged topic about sponsorship and disclosure and a bad light that was shed on dietitians. Even the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics wrote several emails about this. And this was my way of trying to approach the sensitive topic with compassion and camaraderie. So the next time something sticky comes up, think about how you want to position yourself and how you can mediate conflict by approaching in a way that aligns with your brand, not making fun of anybody, not calling anybody out, um, being as objective as I can, and really uh, also talking about the code of ethics, which is as dietitians, we have to abide by that. Now, the next steps after you've decided to engage or not to engage with a particular conversation that's difficult, I want you to think about your values and how you respond to similar conversations because they will happen again. These patterns often show up. Think about your boundaries and coping mechanisms in general. What coping mechanisms do you already practice? And if you don't, now could be a really good time to start that. Also remember the code of ethics. 
We have to abide by the code of ethics from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics as practicing dietitians. So you want to review what that means and looks like and apply that code of ethics to practice. I'll link a relevant video at the end of this video where I talk more about the code of ethics and how to handle a difficult situation by using the code of ethics. So make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll link that. If you want support in navigating difficult conversations, identifying a boundary, and holding your boundaries, I invite you to join the library. That's our affordable membership where you can join on a monthly basis and learn how to grow your business. We have different stages of business just created for you so that you can assess where you're at in your business and learn how to grow with more confidence so that you're not letting your mindset hold you back from becoming the best version of yourself, especially when it comes to navigating difficult conversations. Now, has anyone ever called you the food police or something similar? If that has happened, I want you to watch this next video where I reference the code of ethics from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, and I talk about what it looks like to discuss this from a place of understanding and compassion, trying not to get too upset, and that's a good example of how to navigate a difficult conversation.